A Meditation, Matthew 22. I'm going to start verse 11. And when the king came in to see the guests, he saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment. And he says unto him, Friend, how camest thou in hither not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then said the king to the servants, Bind him hand and foot, and take him away, and cast him into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth, for many are called, but few are chosen. And the scripture, and specifically the words that I want to focus on, verse 13. Then said the king to the servants, Bind him hand and foot and take him away and cast him into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Bind him hand and foot. The word bind, because that is um, a consequence of, of, uh, of sin, to be bound. It's a consequence of sin. It is, um, it says in, um, in Galatians 5, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. So in Christ we have freedom from sin, but when we rebel and disobey God and remain in that disobedience and refuse to repent and turn away from our wickedness, then the consequence is that we are entangled with the yoke of bondage. Entangled with the yoke of bondage. That is the consequence of sin. Whereas Christ makes us free from sin, when we refuse to obey God and his word, then we are entangled to the yoke of bondage. In Proverbs chapter 5, verse 22, His own iniquities shall take the wicked himself, and he shall be holden with the cords of sins. So, the cords of sins are the iniquities. They, the cords that hold and bind is iniquity. It, it's what, when we sin, that's what we're entangled with. Uh, we're bound, we're tied up uh, with the cords of iniquity. And so... The word in uh, bind, um, some of the uh, meaning, to confine, restrain, restrict with bonds, to put under an obligation, to hamper free movement or natural action, to become hindered, hindered, free from operation, or free, uh, to become hindered and unable to be free to obey God. A position or situation in which one is hampered, constrained, or prevented from free movement or action. So to bind, bind him hand and foot, and cast him into outer darkness. Put him in chains, handcuffs, shackles. But it also means to box someone in. It also means mire, mire. And the word mire reminds me of that scripture in Second Peter where it says that the dog has turned to his vomit and the sow to the mire. What does mire mean? 
a troublesome or intractable situation to cause to stick fast in as if in mire. An example, a car that is stuck in the mire, in the mud, and can't get out. So a consequence of backsliding, a consequence of the dog returning to his vomit as the sow back to the mire. Um, it, it, it rep the mire represents going back, being entangled again with sins, with the cords of iniquity, and unable to get out. Unable. That's the consequence of sin. Going back to sin, going back to iniquities, and then being bound, tied up, um, can't get out. The sow going back to the mire, she's stuck, can't move. It, like it said, as an example, a car, the wheel spinning in the mud, in the muck, and can't get out of that situation. That's what happens when we sin. When we sin, especially when we sin on purpose with predetermination, especially when we go back to the filth, God has set us free, but yet we go back to the filth. We go back to that thing where he has set us free from. We go back to it. We get entangled again in, in the yoke of bondage. And then we there's the besetting sin. That's the sin that we keep going back to over and over again. That's the mire. And no matter how we try, we try to get out of it. We try to overcome it. We try to be free from it, but then here we go again. We're doing it again. We go back to it again. That's the consequence when we when we sin and we especially when not fall into sin, but sin on purpose. Sin with predetermination. So for instance, if God has set someone free from pornography and he has given him the grace and strength to overcome that pornography. And so he's been set free through Jesus Christ. But then goes on with pre-meditation pre on purpose, decides to go back, decides to open up that website or just look on purpose, goes back to it. Uh, then there goes where um, going back and entangled again in the yoke of bondage. Then going back, the sow going back to the mire. Uh, then that thing takes hold again. That thing, that iniquity takes hold again and binds and ties them up. And now... When you want to be free, now you have difficulty being free. It's like addiction. Let's say uh, someone who has overcome addiction. They've been, f they've been clean from uh, a a alcohol or a, a drug for some time, for some months, for a year, whatever. But they, pre with predetermination go back to it, then they find themselves in that situation where now they're trying to overcome, they don't want to do it anymore, but they keep going back, and they keep going back, and they keep going back, and now it's hard to get free. That's the sow going to back to the mire. That's where you get stuck, just like a car, the wheels spinning and spinning in the mud and can't get out. That's being bound hand and foot. Um, the word mire, the meaning to hamper or, or hold back, as if by mire, entangled. So the mire is like being in a quagmire. Quagmire means entrapping, being entrapped. It's a difficult situation to get out of. 
That's the consequence. The consequences of our sins. The consequences of, especially I'm talking about uh, refusing to repent, going back to the sin over and over again. Refusing to allow Jesus to set us free from iniquity. Then going back. That's the sow going back to the mire. That's being entangled again, being entangled uh, again with the yoke of bondage. The bondage is sin. Now when we want to be free, we don't want to do it anymore. Now we have a difficult time getting out of it. Now we have a difficult time stopping the sin. Try as we might, we're struggling so that's why it's so important. Seek Jesus. Seek his, uh, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Seek his spirit. Seek obedience. Seek righteousness and holiness. And refuse to go back. Refuse, once Christ has set us free, refuse to go back to the sin or else consequence, being bound hand and foot, going back to the mire, and now difficulty trying to get out, trying to overcome. No matter how we try, we keep going back to the besetting sin.